further points of order, we come now to the 10-minute rule motion for which the Honourable Member for Wandsbeck has been patiently waiting. 10-minute rule motion, Mr Ian Lavery. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to establish the right of persons in receipt of housing benefit and universal credit in the social housing centre to receive seared benefits at regular intervals to provide that such persons should not be financially penalised in relation to the number of bedrooms in a residence and for connected purposes. Mr Speaker, I would hope that my bill today would receive support from all sides of the House. Yeah. It's an yeah. honour branch yeah. to those who perhaps wrongly underestimated the real consequences when they walked through the government lobbies to support the introduction of the bedroom tax. Yeah. Maybe I'm being too generous in saying yeah. this, what the alternative, quite frankly, beggars belief. And that is to say that those who supported the introduction of the bedroom tax knew fully of the dire consequences it would have on those affected. Make no mistake about it, the full and sole intention of this bill is to sweep away the dreaded bedroom tax. Yeah. It seeks to restore justice for up to 660,000 people some of our country's most vulnerable citizens, two-thirds of them who are disabled. They've been inhumanely let down by the government's reforms to housing benefit in the social sector. The tax has caused heartache and devastation to thousands of residents up and down this country. It's a tax whose forced implementation has put extreme pressure on councils on housing associations, on social uh, landlords. And it's a tax that has put extreme pressure on the ordinary working people who are forced to deal with those unable to move and those unable to pay. And on introduction, ministers argue that the changes would encourage people to downsize to smaller properties, and in doing so help to cut the £23 billion annual bill for housing benefit. It would free up living space for overcrowded families and encourage people to get jobs. Significantly, it has achieved none of these objectives. Yeah. At the same time, the DWP have trumpeted the measure as returning the fairness to housing benefits. Mr Speaker, the words fairness and bedroom tax should not be uttered in the same yeah. sentence. This is a problem in each and every constituency up and down the country. It's not simply a problem in Labour-dominated authorities. I was contacted only last week by a distraught resident from the Tory shires, hoping that the bill the day would be successful. For he is a disabled man living in a three-bedroom property. And at the end of the day, he has just received an eviction notice for bedroom. Tax. And he's not alone. The bedroom tax sufferers uh, in Lib Dem and Tory constituencies are estimated at around 250,000. We should perhaps ask them if they think this abominable tax has restored fairness to housing benefits. My bill seeks to truly restore fairness and to end the misery this bedroom tax has caused as hundreds if not thousands of appalling examples of individuals and families suffering. There's a mother of two who suffered a crippling illness. She committed suicide after realising that she couldn't pay the bedroom tax. A family received correspondence later saying that she should have been exempt from payments. A widow aged 59 pleaded with the Prime Minister not to force her to move a husband's ashes were buried in the garden, under the rose bushes. Well. Friends had given them instead of wreaths at the funeral. She didn't have a disability. She didn't have health problems. But this was a family home, for goodness sake. Yeah. And that yeah. does mean something. Yeah. It's a home where people bring up their children and cry tears of, of joy. And in this case, there was many tears of sadness cried in that property when the, 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 the child unfortunately passed away. And you know, it isn't hard to comprehend. It really is difficult to try and get to grips with it. The family of the 1999 child of courage who spent years battling multiple cancers is suffering at the hands of this horrible reform. These people you know, aren't living in a life of luxury and palatial properties. 
They're existing in a place to feel safe, in a place to call home. It's time to listen. I'm sure most fine, fair minded individuals would agree that a bedroom is not spare when carers sleep in it, when couples can't share a bed because of health reasons, or when the house is vital metal, medical equipment, yet this indiscriminate tax deems it so. The reality is, is that yet another measure introduced by this government it is in total and utter chaos. It's, it lies in tatters with the victims being left to pick up the pieces. Whilst thousands suffer as a real risk that the bedroom tax will end up costing more than it saves. The National Housing Federation has said the savings claimed by the government are highly questionable, partly because those forced to move to the private rented sector will end up costing more in housing benefit. And we are entitled as politicians and as members of the general public to question the motives behind the introduction of the bedroom tax. It doesn't deal with the problem of under-occupation. In fact, the government's costs on the yield raised from the bedroom tax explicitly assume that people do not move into smaller properties. There's simply not enough smaller properties for people to move into. That's right. There's some 100, 180,000 households were deemed to be under-occupying two-bedroom homes, yet only 85,000 one-bedroom homes became available during the whole of 2012. The DWP's own savings projections assumed that not one of those affected, the 660,000 households, would respond to the policy by moving to a smaller home. Put simply, Mr Speaker, this is another example of this government balancing the books on the backs of the disabled yeah. in the money. It has to be scrapped. It has to be scrapped now. Housing associations say that tens of millions of, likely, of pounds are likely to be lost through the build-up of arrears. In reports only this morning estimate that 144,000 people have fallen uh, behind with their rent since the introduction of bedroom tax. 14% <coughs> have received eviction notices. Is this what it was really meant to happen? Was this the plan from the government? Eviction of the poor. Research by the University of York published in October based on data from the housing associations who have tenants affected by the bedroom tax suggested that the policy could save up to 39% less than the DWP ha had predicted. Even in the past week it's emerged that more than half of the £500 million uh, pounds the government claims they hear the tax will save will be spent on rehousing disabled people. These are vulnerable people who already live in properties that have been adapted for their needs and who have built up local support networks with their friends, with their families and with their neighbours. The future for them, Mr Speaker, lies in communities unknown to them and foreign to them, cast out like the proverbial dog in the night. In the past, in the past, Mr. Speaker, in the past months, it's emerged that a loophole existed that exempted thousands of people. And instead of closing, instead of looking at that loophole, it looks very much as if the opposition are looking to close. In fact, it's suggested that has been closed at this point in time. And as ministers scramble to mop up the mistakes, another challenge to the hated tax has risen its head. A judge has overturned the tax on a Rochdale man who argued one of his bedrooms was used as a dining room. The appeal was upheld on the basis that the dictionary definition of a bedroom is a one containing a bed or used for sleeping. An avalanche of appeals are on their way. Mr Speaker, I'm proud to see that the Scottish Labour Party shamed the SNP only just last week yeah, yeah, into yeah, abolishing yeah. the bedroom tax. Yeah, yeah. And I must put on record my pride that a Labour government will end this full frontal attack yeah, yeah. on the vulnerable as one of their first acts when elected. However, we cannot afford to wait till 2015 and the general election. Mr Speaker, I urge supporters of this tax to think and think again. You are either happy and satisfied at the misery and the social destruction caused specifically focused on the vulnerable and the disabled, or indeed you are not. That is the question. I began this contribution by expressing the view that those who voted in reduce the dreaded bedroom tax may have underestimated the human suffering that it might cause. 
There shouldn't really be in any doubt now. And I urge them all to do the honourable thing and support my bill. Yeah. Order, the question is that the honourable member have leave to bring in the bill. As many as have that opinion say aye. Aye. Of the contrary, no. no. 